welcome this is just to say thank you for stopping by how are you today okay today i want to make a very simple uh turban style uh the measurements i will just talk about it shortly you know head size is normally 22 i will not be working with 22 what i have here is about 24 I'll cut it again. I'll cut it. It's too big. So I'm just going to reduce it. Uh, so that I'll get 20. I don't want to work with uh, 24 either. So I'm reducing it to 20. So that um, it will be firm on the head. And then uh, that is for the base uh, length. But the body length. That is the length of the turban. Is... Um, plus the band plus the uh, band in front is about a uh, 16 so after cutting it round the way you see me cut the shape just now round eh, i just open it flat i don't want to sew it like the normal top band this one i want to gather it at the middle and this is how i do it so i just open it down like this if you want to do a neater work eh, you can go ahead and just weave after cutting it round like this. Use the interlock uh, uh, machine. That's what you are seeing. That is green behind me there. Just use the interlock machine and weave the whole uh, part of the turban before you start to do your loose stitches. So I'm using the uh, uh, loose stitches now uh, to uh, bring it together. Is this loose stitches that is actually... Uh, sorry <laughs> is the uh, loose stitches that is actually the um sewing that i'm going to use you understand so i'll just do the loose stitches round the whole cap till i get to the you saw the way i began uh, at the first part the edge there till i get to the second edge uh? this i'll use the loose stitch to just go round it and um very important huh do not uh make your stitch as in your the needle uh, movement your distance eh? do not make it too big if you make it too big uh, it will give you a little challenge while trying to close close it together so i always want it that uh, do it as close as possible so long as a loose stitch that you are using and also it gives a kind of beauty to the a gathering you know you are going to be having a form of gather at the middle so when you use a <coughs> if it's too far from each other it will not be beautiful so make it close that's just what i'm trying to say yeah so you make it close make it close it's very important so i've gotten to the end now i've gotten to the end which is the second uh, part so the next thing i'll do is that i'll just drag it i'll drag it together just the way you see me do now i'll drag it together then i'll i will arrange it you understand just like try to make it sit the way it is supposed to be so i will arrange it as i'm trying to arrange it i will give a little kind of um a loose that is i'm not just going to drag it so tight together you understand i'll kind of use it to i'll free the the stitch is a little while I release uh, the pleats uh, gradually. So this is this is it. You can see the way I'm releasing it now. Uh, so I'm not just drag it together tight like that. No. You understand? You release it to an extent because you know it's supposed to sit on somebody's head now. So there's a way you drag it now. It will look too tight. Uh, the cap, the cap itself now will become too small for the head. So after drawing it, uh, using the loose stitches, eh, you release it a bit, you release it a bit. After releasing it a bit, you will now bring those parts, that, the parts that are gathered together, and then you use your uh, needle and thread, and then sew it together. Yes, that part now, you sew it together. Try to like uh, identify pleats that go together so that it will not bend. In order to avoid it from uh, uh, bending and losing its position, eh, you start by joining the two edges. Eh, 
and make sure that it is sitting properly because that's the only part that if there is any kind of mistake will be easily noticed and by the time you are wearing this cap it's going to look like a v uh a v front you understand this is another form another way of making a v front apart from the part that it, the fact that uh, you cross it eh so the next thing i'll do is that i want to use this screen on it that three inches uh, screen on it so that's what i want to use to design it and to for me to get the i'm using a satin material to cover it and you can see that the satin material i have there is almost uh, seven inches eh? and then the length is uh the length doesn't matter because what i'm doing is i will be cutting it but for me to sew it now you saw what i did i used the crinone i kept the pre uh, sorry I kept the uh, crinone inside the material to take the measurement of where the uh, crinone will rest. And then I will not just sew exactly that part. I go in a little so that by the time I put the crinone inside the satin, it will be a little bit tight. You understand now? It should be a little bit tight. So right now, I folded the crinone into two so that it will give me a kind of... Um, um, um is it should i say firmness now i just want it to be a little bit strong you understand if you use one it will not be as strong as when you used to and if you use three it will not be as stronger it will be stronger than when you use them uh, two as well you understand so sometimes i double it depending on what i want so for this particular style i'm doing now i double it uh, i doubled the crane on it to give it a kind of uh weight to enable it stand uh properly so the reason i didn't give the length was, was that i was going to be cutting it anyway so i did not bother giving the length so the part that i am going to be cutting out the part that i'm going to be cutting out to use now uh you can cut between uh, seven inches but depending on you, know, you can use five inches as well between five six seven inches is okay so that when you fold it uh, the aim is i want to fold it separately and i'll get about six uh six uh pieces of this now uh of the folded uh ones and then i will now join it together like a circle are we together so i'll get about six pieces of it you understand now uh, separately because it's not every pattern of this screen only folding that you can get just holding a long crinoline and start folding no some pattern require that you make it one after the other cut it out and then bring it together again that's the only way you can get the exact uh, pattern so for this one now that's what i'll be doing i'll just you see the part i'm sewing there now after i am done sewing that part if you are with your uh, sewing machine you don't need to uh, stress yourself using uh, the needle and thread but assuming you don't have a sewing machine it is very okay to work with the needle and thread this particular uh, part that i'm sewing now uh it's not really going to show by the time i'm done by the time by the time i am done with the work it will not really show so sewing it with um, needle and thread is no problem at all so this is how i will sew the whole six together you understand me and then cut them out then i'll bring them together and sew it again to form the shape that i want so right now the six is ready and this is how it will look you can see it this is how each one will look now we have um two method of placing uh of preparing it huh? now if i fix it the way it is there now it will be flat but if you want it standing if you want it standing this is what i do you come back to it again and fold these edges you kiss it together you understand and sew it together again so if you are going if you want it standing you are going to do what i'm doing now for the whole six that you want to use are we together but if you don't want it standing eh if you don't want it standing all you need to do is just bring the six together without folding that edge now and then you just uh, sew it together but if you want it standing you do what i just showed you now eh? and still use this same method 
to put the six together, it will just be round. You understand? It will just be round. So I'm just going to be putting it on top of each other while I try to achieve the uh, particular style uh, that I want. Hmm? I do hope you are following. The video is not long. Huh? The video is not long. I try most times. Huh? Uh, the things we do, the video is supposed to be long. But you know now, nah, most times you people don't want to watch long videos. So we try to like shorten some parts, shorten some. I, most times I had to like squeeze uh, most of the things for me to get 18, get 12 minutes, get 15 uh, minutes. So this is just what I am doing now. Joining, uh, I'm sorry for this, yeah. Joining it together. Uh, I'm just sewing it together. After which, uh, I will place it to the turban. That's the turban that uh, that we prepared earlier. I'm just going to place it to the turban. Mm? I'll place it to the turban. So this is the uh, six sewn together. You can see it there. One, two, three, four, uh, five. It's five there now. It's remaining one. I'm going to add that one to it. And then after which I will uh, uh, attach uh, a rose. I have a rose that I want to place at the middle. Uh, so that's the sixth one. So I will now place a rose at the middle. This was the reason I said uh, the middle, that part I was sewing does not really matter because no matter what I do, I will finally use my rose to cover it. And you can place the rose either by uh, sewing it with needle and thread or by applying your hot glue directly and then uh, just placing it to it. It's a very uh, simple uh, process. I do hope you understood. And I think, uh, can I ask now? I hope you enjoyed, you enjoyed it. Huh? So this is just the rose that I placed on it there. I can sew it. Alright, so I'm just using my needle and thread to sew it. And to do that, I have to be careful not to sew the other part of the turban to it. That's why you see I'm placing my hand at the middle. I swear it was uh, tough using a uh, needle and thread through it. You know already, these uh, rows have um, some part of it that is glued with hot glue. So needle passing through it was really tough, but I was able to manage so even though I used my needle like this, I'm still going to use hot glue later. So though it's not part of the video, but I will use hot glue later. It's just to let you know. Here you see the stress I'm passing through to use the needle and thread. So that's the reason most times I just go through with hot glue. If your hot glue machine is really hot, you will not have the problem of your work pulling off. That's just the truth. Huh? So I just tack it a little down but i will still use my hot glue to do my finishing so that will be all for today's class i hope it's very simple you can do yours and uh, send it to me i am on facebook and it is still a creative hands platform on facebook yes my page is creative hands platform on facebook so if you send me your, your work and say ah this work is from uh, your YouTube uh, subscriber, man. I will love it. I will be super glad. So this is just it. I bet it's beautiful. And I guess you love it. Do have a nice day. Don't forget to stop by next time. Love you.